music pretty much entered my life before my life began, I'm sure. My mother sang and played piano, my father sang and played piano, and it seemed like all of their siblings sang and played piano. Some would sing in the church choirs and things like that. Larry Heard is Deep House. He's, he's the one who put Deep into house, you know, because he brought all the things that, um, that I feel are deep, meaning a bit complex chords, a certain kind of musicality. He was the one who bring it to house music. What makes the Larry Head track unique for me, as I said, it's the, the deep emotive stuff that comes out of the music and also the, the artistry. I grew up in Chicago, born and raised there. Um, lived here for many decades. Yeah, I have four brothers, and actually two of them were playing guitar by the time they were 10 or 11 years old. And I kind of followed a few years later. I was more a late bloomer, because I was, I was the one with the tape recorder. I was the, had the, the little kid with the tape recorder with the handle that you carry, and I was recording everybody's rehearsal. So I was more maybe doing starting engineering without really realizing it. Yeah, I started deliberately playing drums when I was about 17. I was in a Rush cover band, a Genesis cover band, a Yes cover band. And they weren't really interested in the drummer's ideas for music, so I kind of transitioned to um, getting my own synthesizer and drum machine. I got my first drum machine at a, your normal music shop. I think it was Guitar Center in Chicago, where at one point you go there and you look through the window and you dream, and then later on, after you save some money, you actually go in and purchase something. And that's what I did. Finally got my drum machine, got the Roland TR-707. And from there, I just started having fun with it. There were friends and buddies in the neighborhood who were, who were going to the warehouse and different parties like that. So they started to hear what I was doing. They said, well, this is like the music they play at the warehouse. So a friend of one of the DJs take a copy of the tape to uh, Frankie Knuckles, and he got it to Ron Hardy as well. The response to the music uh, was pretty much immediate. They didn't say much, they just started playing it right away, which said everything that needed to be said. And everything kind of started from there to snowball downhill. Yeah. The, the first time I heard Larry Heard record in the club was also actually uh, when I was 15, 16. It was on holidays in Greece, and it was a very shady nightclub with a DJ playing all sorts of not so sophisticated music but then he dropped Can You Feel It and that was a magic moment for me because it changed a lot of perception for, for house music for me. What I realized over the years um, buying Chicago records, old Chicago records, is that Larry was actually the first one to bring true jazz sophistication to to house music, you know, because every, everything before him was basically more or less just drum beats with a bit of bass lines or but not like these kind of major nine, minor nine, like these complex chords, you know. So, it, you know, you had all this crap the DJ was playing and he had this record and he was like, boom, finally there's music, you know, and it was, wow, special moment. Hearing Can You Feel It really, truly had a great impact and I, I think I actually just started crying on the dance floor. Uh, well, my father is deceased now, so he, he, he died right after we did the Another Side album. But he was walking around with that under his arm, you know, in the neighborhood, so he obviously was happy about that. I think they're proud of, you know, just taking the, the risk. I think every person has dreams, but some of those dreams turn into regrets, though, when you don't really 
undertake it a little bit. You, know, you end up with regret, saying I should have done it, I should have done this, should have done that. You know? So I think that's what they're, they're most proud of, that you know, took a chance. You know? and went outside of broke tradition. I don't tend to follow trends at all. I tend to more kind of use it as a cue to go in another direction. My kind of music, I kind of always had DJs get mad at me because I won't stay on 124. I have the song that's 110 and the song that's 120. And I think there's been a couple that might be 130, but very few. So I tend to kind of stay on the lower register as far as BPM. It's just where it feels best. Yeah, I go with the Quincy Jones motto, where it feels best is where it is best. I want it to come through my hands and more than coming through my brain, I think. Yeah. I get into mechanical routines that I don't even know why I'm doing it. I'm just doing it out of habit. You know? And I definitely don't want to do that with music where I'm just doing it out of habit and not because I want to do it. You know? And that's what you want to want to do it. And that's when it's going to have the most life. got into this music it, it literally it sounds really cheesy but it changed my life it changed everything I was studying to be a lawyer <laughs> you know and pretty much I changed my course of direction and I would say pretty much his music is responsible the legacy that he's left I mean we still really are living via that Blueprint. Truth be told, without Larry Heard, there would not be much of our house music around. All the good house music you like, it's all Larry's blueprint. You know? Yeah, when I heard Larry Heard at Dimensions, I was completely blown away by, by his music, the way he put it together. Also by the fact that I, I could have listened to a few more other hours. Seeing young people that were not even born when this music first came out there and uh, celebrating the music was just unbelievable. It was uh, different because it had been a long time for me at least even five years since I've been done any kind of DJing events. So, but it was good, it was energizing and reinvigorating and fun and all that stuff and, and scary, all these different emotions kind of moving through you simultaneously that kind of get you going. A lot of people dancing, which is definitely what you want, people dancing. So all of the right things were happening. You know? And they were clapping for me, and I was clapping for them, you know. We're, we're all part of this. You know? I can't begin to imagine what this music would be like without the contribution of Larry. It slams, you know, like it just fucking slams. This is how it should be, yeah. you know. Music is about bringing us all together. It's about healing and spirituality. And uh, it's not about ego, because nobody's bigger than the music. I didn't think to do it, I just did it. A lot of things that I've been involved in is very little thinking, it's more I feel like doing it, so I'm doing it. Like you put
put a Larry record on and that's it, you know. No much talk about it. To have you beside me in the morning.